Listen, you know, um, I think a lot of times when people see these kind of the, the protests and that type of stuff on the field, they think that you guys just got political like 15 seconds ago. Uh, but you have been actively involved in community stuff for years. I mean, we have a whole, I, I tried to put it in. I said, just put it up on the screen. We have a whole <laughs> list of stuff you've been doing. You've been uh, doing ride-alongs with police. You've been meeting with legislators. You've been testifying in front, in front of Capitol Hill. Why do you, as an athlete, feel it's important for you to keep doing all this stuff? I mean, it's not just the, the protests on the field. You're doing real hard work. Yeah, I think most of us, especially in the NFL, you look at where these players are coming from. Um, it's these same neighborhoods and communities that, that are underserved, that are depleted, and, and we are sometimes the few that have gone out and made it, you know, and had the opportunity through sports to go to college, get an education, experience some things. Well, then why don't you stay gone? I mean, you got out. I mean, why are you going back? Well, I mean, my family still lives in the same areas that I grew up in. My dad lives in the same house uh, that he grew up in. My family's all in northern New Jersey. And you see, uh, you know, some of the disparities in our country, the injustices not only affect my family, but the kids that, that I serve through my foundation all over the country. You know, I can, I can have them in my program, but I'm still sending them back to that neighborhood that has, you know, no opportunity, no, no, no real chance for them to thrive. Well, you, know, you and uh, Anquan Bolden did something that was really uh, extraordinary. You got 40 players together to create something called the Players Coalition. And that coalition has actually been bargaining and negotiating with the NFL to try to get them to do more. Uh, you've got a three-point agenda around criminal justice, around police reform, around education. I mean, this is a highly unusual. Uh, why did you decide to go and get all these people together to, to, to work as a unit? Yeah, well, uh, shortly after those, the player protests started in 2016, after Kaepernick started uh, that, that whole movement, uh, Anquan Bolden reached out to a couple guys that were, or to a group of guys that were already kind of talking league-wide, uh, and we organized a trip to D.C. We met with legislators on both sides of the aisle about criminal justice reform, um, and we took two trips. And after our second trip, Anquan and I, you know, we sat down and said, if we could uh, you know, a group of five athletes use our influence to get all of these meetings that activists and people who do this stuff daily can't get, you know, how much more leverage can we have if we actually create a coalition of players all over this league that can obviously create change in these 32 cities in our country? Mm -hmm. um, and we, because we knew there's, there was interest of other guys. So we started reaching out to our peers uh, and soon thereafter after started what we're calling the Players Coalition. And, you know, how, how is it going? I mean, it's, it's got to be weird for, this is not like a normal, like, labor union. I mean, you right. guys are getting together, not fighting for your own benefit, but for the community's benefit. How's it going? Uh, I mean, it's a learning curve for us, and, and we've uh, done a good job of really reaching out to experts in the field uh, to kind of, one, teach us what's happening, um, and just using our voices and platforms to educate our fan base, to draw attention to, to solutions and how everybody can play a role in it. Well, you know, it seems to me that, you know, given how politically engaged you are and how sophisticated you are, going to the White House would be the next logical step. But you said you're not going to the White House. Brother, why aren't you going to the White House? People go on planes, brother. They stand in long lines to get into the White House. Why are you not going to the White House? Well, me personally, I've been to the White House before. Uh, winning a, tri a championship with the Saints, I did the whole, you know, uh, going to the White House, taking a picture with the president. Um, at this point in time, I'm not interested in photo ops. You know, I, I'm, I'm very interested in doing the work on criminal justice reform, very interested in, in, in meeting with members of both parties. It doesn't matter to me. Where, where that work is is where I'll be. Um, and this is just not one of those opportunities. This is a celebratory event where, you know, we come, the president comes in, shakes a couple hands, takes a picture and leave. And I'm just not interested in that. I mean, but if you, if you don't go, does it make it seem like you're not patriotic, you don't, you, you're mad at America. I mean, how do you, how do you deal with people who make those kind of criticisms? Uh, I mean, I think everybody has their own opinion. You know, when it comes to this presidency, I'm just, I'm not very excited about getting my picture taken with him. <laughs> you know, it's just not worth my time. I'd rather uh, spend my time working with, you know, whoever on these issues that we've been fighting for. Um, that's just my personal decision. Tough question for you. You said one of your big pillars is criminal justice reform. Uh, in the White House, there are people now pushing to make that happen. If Donald Trump called you and said, look, I don't like your protest, I don't like your flag stuff, or whatever, I'm gonna put that to one side. Come to the Oval Office and talk to me about a substantive issue like criminal justice reform. Would you do it? I think I would definitely consider that. I mean, it's, it, if I did, wouldn't, then you know, what, what is it that I'm trying to get accomplished? And so if you can go directly to 
uh, the, the president of the United States and talk about these issues that are plaguing our communities, I think that's a responsibility for us, regardless of how you feel about somebody on a personal uh, level. Well, give him a round of applause, because that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's what's not happening. Look, I mean, that's, that's the kind of leadership that's not happening. You have people who literally just will not even get in a room together because they disagree, but I, I can tell your commitment. I want to say something to you uh, personally, which I don't think I've, I've been able to say to you before. What you guys have been able to do is unreal. As great as Muhammad Ali was, he never got the whole of boxing to sit down and talk with him about an issue. As great as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was, he never got the whole NBA, NBA to sit down and talk with him about the issue. You guys have gotten the entire NFL, the owners, the leaders, to have to sit down and actually negotiate with you, you know, human being to human being, not about your salary, but about social justice. It's never happened before. It's an honor to meet you. Keep doing what you're doing and keep winning. <laughs>